Hello girls. Today's class will be for the third chapter of our English syllabus and that is Jimmy Valentine. As you know that in the previous uh, class of Jimmy Valentine, I had dealt with you uh, with the first part of the chapter and um, we had uh, learned something about the writer O. Henry. Now this is as is the second class in which I will deal with this chapter again. So let us go back to the previous part of the chapter a little bit. Okay. In it we have learned about the author O. Henry and we have also learned that his stories are marked excellently with a surprise twist at the end. So now the main protagonist of the story, Jimmy Valentine, is seen to be in prison but the story begins with the preparation of his release from the prison the next day. Before that, while in a conversation with the warden of the prison, he promptly denies the fact that he had been to jail for several burglaries. Thereafter, the warden suggests him to rehabilitate and to lead a straight life. Jimmy, however, does not pay heed to the warden his suggestions and of course to the nature when released. He being hungry goes to a restaurant to have lunch. So this was all about the gist or the synopsis of the previous part of the chapter that we have dealt with. But uh, from this portion of the story girls we can have a few questions like Number one, you will go out in the morning. Who is the speaker and who is going out and from where is he going out? Okay, I hope you have understood. Question number two goes like this. Oh no, why did the warden laugh here? Number three, why do you think Jimmy was reluctant to pay heed to nature also. Number four, what did law expect Jimmy to do? And number five, what idea do you frame in your mind about Jimmy the burglar? Now that we have rebrushed ourselves, we would uh, move on to the next part of the chapter. So the last sentence was, he went to the cafe of one Mike Dolan and shook hands with Mike who was alone behind the bar. Now let us find out who this Mike Dolan is. Sorry, we couldn't make it sooner, Jimmy me boy, said Mike. But we had that protest from Springfield to buck against and the governor nearly barked. Feeling all right? Now this was a sort of conversation with uh, Jimmy, with uh, you know, Mike Dolan about uh, the burglaries. Fine, said Jimmy. Got my key? So, the keys. What are these keys for? And about? Let us find out. He got his key and went upstairs, unlocking the door of a room at the rear, rear of the restaurant. Everything was just as he had left it. So, this is a place that Jimmy Valentine used to stay over here, okay, before he had been arrested by the police in case of a burglary. So that is why it is. it, it has been said that everything was just as a, he had left it. There on the floor was still Ben Price's collar button that had been torn from that eminent detective's shirt band when they had overpowered Jimmy to arrest him. So in this place, at this moment of time, we find that uh, when Jimmy Valentine was being arrested, so there was, you know, uh, 
you know, a sort of fight between Ben Price and Jimmy Valentine. So who is this Ben Price? Ben Price is a detective and we will find him all over the story from now on. Okay, he will be given the task of interrogating or investigating the case of Jimmy Valentine. Pulling it out from the wall up folding bed, Jimmy slid back a panel in the wall and dragged out a dust covered suitcase. So now see the arrangements he had made in his room. Okay, a panel that was hung on the wall and he dragged out a dust covered suitcase. He opened this and gazed fondly at the finest set of burglar's tools in the East. So, see how very famous or rather negatively famous this burglar, Jimmy Valentine was. He had his own set of burglar's tools and that was probably the finest set over. It was a complete set made of specially tempered steel. The latest designs in drills, punches, braces and bits, jimmies, clamps and augers with two or more, three novelties invented by Jimmy himself in which he took pride. Now see, we will find here in this sentences that Jimmy was not, not only a burglar but he was a great technician himself also because he prepared, he made his own tools for burglary. And those were the elements of pride for him, okay? Over $900 they had cost him to have made that. Now, this was a huge sum of money that he had spent to make all these tools himself. A place where they make such things for the profession. And now see, he had made, he has designed all such tools and he had made people, engaged people, who are, you know, into this profession of making tools for the burglaries and he had spent a huge sum of money for this. In half an hour, Jimmy went downstairs and through the cafe. He was now dressed in tasteful and well-fitting clothes and carried his dusted and cleaned suitcase in his hand. Now, you will find girls in each and every story, short story rather, of O. Henry. His characters are good-looking, his characters are smart, his characters are well dressed and he probably he likes his characters to be handsome and good looking and charming and our very own Jimmy Valentine was really a charming personality and here we see that he is tasteful also in he had a sense of dressing good dressing sense he had okay got anything on asked Mike Tolm genially me said Jimmy in a puzzled tone I don't understand I'm representing the New York Amalgamated Short Snap Biscuit Cracker and Frazzled Wheat Company. Now, this Mike Dolan also didn't know that he was a burglar. And he didn't know probably the reason why he was arrested. So, he just pretended to know nothing of, of that business about why he was, he was arrested. So, he just made up his mind to look innocent in front of Mike Dolan also. So he said that yes, I don't know why all this happened because I am representing a company. It is a biscuit company and a wheat company. So I am a bit puzzled. This statement delighted Mike to such an extent that Jimmy had to take a seltzer and milk on the spot. He never touched hard drinks. So now he was a generous person also. He was a good person at heart also. So he had good characteristics of a good character. So this was how Jimmy Valentine was. Okay. Now a week after the release of Valentine 9762, I hope you remember this number, there was a neat job of safe burglary done in Richmond, Indiana with no clue to the author. Now again, again a burglary and that too with nothing to be found about the burglar. It was a neat job. It was a perfect job of burglary. You know, every work needs a perfection, needs some amount of perfection. And 
Jimmy Valentine was a perfect burglar. He was an expert burglar. He was adept in doing whatever he was doing. Okay, so he left no clue for the police to find out who was behind all these. So again, a safe cracking. A scant $800 was all that was secured. And then from this burglary, $800 was looted from the bank. Two weeks after that, a patented improved burglar-proof safe in Logan Spot was opened like a cheese to the tune of $1,500 currency, securities and silver untouched. And then again, you know, a series of burglaries was being on. And the second burglary after his release was, was a great one because the safe was a patented one. The lock was a patented one and it was next to impossible for anybody to open it. But Jimmy Valentine was such, a, such an expert burglar that it was just a piece of cake for him. He just cut it, cut open the lock or the vault in such a way that it was just a very easy task for him. That began to interest the row catchers. Then an old fashioned bank safe in Jefferson City became active and throughout of its crate an eruption of banknotes amounting to $5,000. So girls, you, you can see here that in this paragraph we see that from $800 to $5,000 now, the amount was increasing and the locks, the vaults, the safes were very much difficult or in, nearly impossible to crack open. But it was just very easy for this guy, Jimmy Valentine. The losses were now high enough to bring the matter up into Ben Price's class of work. Now this Ben Price, ben Price sorry, was uh, you know, a class of detective, first grade of detective and he was brought into and he was brought into this matter and now he was to investigate who was about who was behind all this. By comparing notes a remarkable similarity in the methods of the burglaries was noticed as he was a detective and you, and you know that for a great detective nothing goes off his notice. And same thing happened here also. Ben Price noticed that there were some similarities in these in all these burglaries. Ben Price investigated the scenes of the robberies and was heard to remark. Now Ben Price was brought in here as I told you and now he started investigating and with his initial in investigation he found out something and let us find out what it is. That's Dandy Jim Valentine's autograph. He's resumed business Look at that combination knob jerked out as easy as pulling up a radish in wet weather. How very intelligent the work was done by Jimmy Valentine. Isn't it interesting girls that it was as easy for a burglar to cut it off from the vault as you can well pull out a radish or a carrot from a wet soil. And do you think this word is appropriate here, this autograph? Do you think he has left his autograph on, on the site of burglary or somewhere he had done this? No, but the autograph here is symbolical. It means that his works did have some similarities and it identified him that yes, it was he who is behind all these burglaries. Okay. He's got the only clamps that can do it. Now this Ben Price was as intelligent and brilliant as Jimmy Valentine was because he well, very well knew that he had the only tools, finest set of tools as we have learned earlier that can do it and no other burglar can do such a job. And look how clean those tumblers were punched out. Jimmy never has to drill but one hole. Now, just as we scoop, you know, scoop out, a, uh, you know, a dollop of ice cream or scoop, cut a piece of cake, 
just as easy it was for him to dug a hole just a single hole and bring out the lock of the vault whether it is patented or not yes i guess i want mr valentine and he was very much sure and confident that it was jimmy valentine who was behind all these burglaries he will do his bit next time without any short time or clemency foolishness now he says ben price says that he will not be foolish enough and he will do his job and let me do my job this time now this is very interesting girls that a burglar knows the investigator very well and ben price the investigator the detective knows the burglar very well they both knew each other's habits ben price knew jimmy's habits he had learned them while working on the springfield case long jumps quick getaways no confederates and a taste for good society these ways had helped mr valentine to become noted as a successful dodger of retribution now this was very intelligent on the part of jimmy valentine he knew very well how to show him off to the you know elite class of the society people and how to look good in front of people and as a good personality of the society as a responsible citizen of the place and not as a burglar and this was this all was known by ben price also it was given out that ben price had taken up the trail of the elusive cracksman and other people with burglar proof safes felt more at ease now ben price was also after him for a long time one afternoon jimmy valentine and his suitcase climbed out of the mail hack in emmore a little town 5 miles of the railroad down in the black jack country of arkansas now arkansas is in you know the states of america as you know girls and elmore is a little town where jimmy valentine moved from this place jimmy looking like an athletic young senior just home from college went down the board sidewalk toward the hotel now he just wanted to shift from one place to another and be a gentle sober and a good citizen in a new place and perhaps he has some planning in his mind let us find out what he wants to do and how he wants to do it a young lady crossed the street passed him at the corner and entered a door over which was a sign the elmore bank jimmy valentine looked into her eyes forgot what he was and became another man she lowered her eyes and colored slightly young men of jimmy's style and looks was scarce in elmore now this line is important this sentence is rather important girls young men of jimmy's style and looks was scarce in elmore so as i told you earlier that o henry's characters are handsome good looking and charming also and jimmy was not an exception to this okay so now let us see who is this lady young lady crossed the street okay and he and just she went into a bank which was the elmore bank now jimmy valentine happened to look straight into her eyes and he just fell in love in the very first sight that we'll see just now and he just felt that something had happened to him he had been transformed to some other person Jimmy colored colored a boy loafing on the steps of the bank as if he were one of the stockholders and began to ask him questions about the town feeding him dimes at intervals dime is a sort of currency there okay as we have rupee here so jimmy just got hold of a boy who was just on the steps of the bank just to have some information about that place the the bank and obviously and primarily about that lady who just went into the bank by and by the young lady came out looking royally unconscious of the young man with the suitcase and went her away now he was um, he, he was just after her 
and uh, just um, a young lady just came out of the bank looking royally unconscious she was really unconscious of the man though he was a very smart handsome and uh, charming personality just standing in front of her and uh, she just went away without noticing this person isn't that young lady polly simpson now this was how somebody uh, you know tends to know the name of the person he wants to now he he, he never had met her and he did not know her name but this was just to know the name in real asked jimmy with specious guile no said the boy she is anabel atoms her pa owns this bag why would you come to elmore for is that a gold watch chain i'm going to get a bulldog got any more dimes now this boy was just seeking or wanting some more dimes and uh, in this way here jimmy valentine is seen to know the name of this lady character of this chapter who will play a great role in the rest of the chapter that we will see jimmy went to the planters hotel registered as ralph d spencer and engaged a room now here we see that he does not register himself as jimmy valentine he changes his name and becomes ralph d spencer he leaned on the desk and declared his platform to the clerk he said he had come to elmore to look for a location to go into business how was the shoe business now in the town he had thought of the shoe business was there an opening so a number of uh, you know questions were there in his mind and he wanted to know of all the things he wanted to get all the informations from this you know receptionist at the hotel desk and uh, he kept on asking him questions just to he really wanted to do something new in this town and he wanted to start a shoe business over here the clerk was impressed with the clothes and the manner of jimmy he himself was something of a pattern of fashion to the thinly gilded youth of elmore but he now perceived his shortcomings now see this uh, receptionist as as a, at the desk of this hotel was himself a good looking uh, youth but he just uh thought that he had felt shot of this person standing in front of him he was really charming a personality while trying to figure out jimmy's manner of trying his four e hand he cordially gave in information so whatever was asked for he gave all the information to jimmy valentine and here we will stop girls and in the next class we will just carry on with the rest of rest part of the chapter and we will find a little little bit of you know uh, difficulties in the life of jimmy valentine and we will see how and why he will get transformed that's all and thank you